and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'll call the meeting to order. Um, the approval of the regular agenda, I take a motion. It's going to be 2024 budget discussion. So moved. There's been a motion by Rick, seconded by Sean. Um, any other questions or otherwise all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. All right. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, hopefully you've all had a chance to at least skim the pack a little bit and kind of be caught up to where uh, we are currently at with the situation. I know um, we briefly talked about it at council last week. Uh, basically at that point, I kind of informed you uh, that we had been made aware of the fact that uh, the reported proposed levy for New Prague, at least on the Scott County side, was at about 3.9 million instead of 5.1. Uh, we weren't quite sure about LeSueur County because those hadn't come out yet. Um, we found out, I found out about a day later that in fact we had, uh, they had gotten their information from Scott County and used that same information. So they were also reporting us down 1.5 million. Um, and then kind of in the memo here, I, I, I've laid out the steps kind of then, since then, um, we've talked both to Scott County who didn't believe there's anything they could do since they reported it to the state, though they did reach out to the Department of Revenue um, and heard back the next day, Tuesday, this would be the 21st, uh, that the city should basically over levy for 2025 as that is what has been recommended to cities uh, in the past, that this some sort of error has happened. So at the same time, um, also worked with uh, Scott Riggs out of Kennedy and Graven, um, who has uh, an attorney on staff who had worked for the Department of Revenue um, in a, at a, as a past employer. Um, we had contacts, but that particular person was out of the office for the week on vacation. Um, but he started digging through statutes and, um, as I explained, kind of found two statutes that he thought may be applicable um, with his opinion being that uh, we pursue some sort of correction through the Department of Revenue. Uh, ultimately, um, I know Robin spoke with the Department of Revenue and spoke to an employee who was aware of the situation before we even brought it up um, and that uh, they had seen this and flagged it on their side um, and had reached out to the county according to this employee um, and had uh, ultimately been told, nope, that is what New Prague does want to levy. And so they recorded uh, that. Um, so uh, he would mentioned while not necessarily expecting a call, he wasn't surprised to hear a call from us. Um, he was very helpful, though he did say there's nothing that he could do um, to help us out and that he also recommended over levying um, at that point. Uh, this week when um, the staff members for Kenny and Graven were all back in, um, I know that they have reached out to numerous sources, including both the League and the Department of Revenue, um, and at this point are continuing to work with the Department of Revenue to see if there is a solution. Um, we have not yet been told uh, we can't, so I know that they are working on something up there. Um, that being said, I do think it is important that we have some sort of worst case scenario in place if we have to. Um, I know I've been in contact with uh, Scott Riggs about our truth and taxation hearing at this point of, of how we're supposed to go about doing that. Um, the last time I talked to him about it, he uh, kind of recommended we kind of do two truth and taxation hearings a little bit, reporting on both our original intended number as well as the state recorded number, um, and kind of go forward with that, though I will continue to be in uh, conversations with him about that. All that being said, worst case scenario, if we are uh, required to levy $3.9 million, um, I believe we should have a conversation with how exactly we are going to approach not only 2024, but maybe 2025 and beyond. Um, the packet I gave you laid out various options, uh, kind of three main options and then sub options off of those, though obviously you can fluid a lot of stuff together from various things. Uh, the first first one being taking the straight recommendation of, and this would be on page three now if you're following exactly what's in there, um, 
Can we, uh, Josh, oh, yeah. just for the record and yep. for, so people watching this, um, can you go through the process of what exactly happened? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I just want to make sure that I can explain it well because I've already been asked about mm -hmm. it. Yep. And I missed the council meeting last yeah. the, uh, last Monday. Um, so I wasn't aware of it until you, you reached out to me, and I appreciate yep. that. But, um, but I got a feeling this is going to be could Probably. be a lot of interest yeah. and people are going to watch this. Probably. And I mean, so. I, I know that there's already been an article in the paper. I saw that. Um, so if there weren't questions that before, there probably are now. Um, so basically back in, and it, it laid out in greater detail kind of in uh, the first, the second paragraph there, um, getting us to two weeks ago when we became aware. Um, but basically back in September after the city council approved its preliminary levy of um, just over 5.1 million, which was roughly a 5% increase over the 2023 mm -hmm. levy. And um, we were working on getting that down below yes. that 5%. Or, or, yeah. well, I just want to make that, I just, oh, I, I yeah. want all that to come out. That Correct, yeah. So, so yeah. We could not go higher than that. Yep, so that, that was our preliminary not to exceed levy, which is how it works in Minnesota. Um, so we set that at 5.1, um, setting it actually higher than we even needed to at that point for our budgeted numbers, but knowing that we couldn't come down, um, we wanted to make sure we left ourselves a small amount of wiggle room just in case something comes up. You never know what's going to come up in the last month that suddenly you're grateful that um, you had the extra 50000 in the prelim. So we set that at 1.1 um, with the full intent of bringing it down um, from there. Uh, we had a form, and I have included the form in your mm -hmm. packet if you haven't seen it already. Uh, basically, uh, the form asks us to... Uh, put our general fund, or how, well, how exactly is it worded? So it asks for your gross certified levy. This is page 11. This would be page 11, correct. Mm -hmm. Your gross you. certified yes. levy out of your general revenue, um, your debt service, and your EDA. So we filled those out um, according to what we had discussed. Uh, it then wants to know what you had for property aid, property tax aid. And then it asks you to take A, subtract B to get yourself to C, which is what we filled out and submitted that to the county as they requested. Um, along with the resolution. So the county at that point, um, so we submitted this all to the county after it was approved at the council. The county at that point, um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, Robin, uh, came back to us and said, hey, we just want to clarify some of your numbers. They don't entirely match up. Um, it would be an email um, that the resolution should match this number right here um, or something along those lines. Um, if you could get that corrected and sent back to us. And so uh, we hearing from them that our resolution had to match column C, um, that is the number that we updated and sent back to them. Uh, as uh, whatever they needed from us. So it was at that point that they then submitted that stuff off to the state, um, and we didn't hear anything of it. Um, hearing from uh, when we talked to the Department of Revenue, and this is the second full paragraph on page two of the memo, um, it sounds like somebody at the Department of Revenue um, thought it was real strange that New Prague was decreasing its levy by 18% and wanted to clarify before anything got recorded. <coughs> so they reached out to Scott County to confirm that that was correct since they are the reporting county for us. And we're told by the county that yes, that in fact is what New Prague wants to report as their preliminary levy. Um, nobody at the state and or the county ever reached out to us. So is this form, it, it's not incorrect because it appears that you're following the instructions. So why in the heck would they think that our tax levy is 3.9 instead of 5.1? Apparently that is how you're supposed to interpret the form. So I can say that at my previous employer, um, was in Dodge County. Dodge County does, at least when I was there, did not require this form. Um, it sounds like talking to both our auditors and, uh, and to Scott County, um, 
Some counties have a form similar to this that they ask. Others don't. The, the form itself is not required by state statute. It is um, something that the county put together to collect information from its cities. Oh, okay. So the mistake was made at the county level then? They recorded it? They, they basically, yeah. So I, I will say that I, I would guess the county would say that we made the mistake in terms of interpreting the form incorrectly. Um, I will say that we submitted it based on what we thought they needed and how we interpreted the form and that we interpreted the form differently, I guess. Mm -hmm. Is this a new form for Scott County this year? Mm -hmm. Or is it, have we done, has Scott County required this? I believe that they have required this for about 15 years at this point. Okay. I know, I know last year when we filled out the form um, was my first year filling out the form. And we were trying to compare with the previous year's forms, trying to figure out what the heck was going on. Um, and we basically over-reported our general revenue um, by the LGA amount because it seemed like that was happening. But this year when we came to it, we wanted to make sure we were doing it correctly. And there's nothing in here about needing to over-report your LGA. Mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to make sure that our numbers were reporting accurately since that is what this form is supposed to be doing. So column A, the correction that would have been <clears throat> appropriate to the county would have been if in column A, we would have increased, <clears throat> sorry, the four million by the LGA in column B so that then when we're reducing it in column B, it's neutral. Mm -hmm. And that's where Josh and I have just kind of questioned that purpose then. If we are to inflate the general revenue simply to later subtract it, what is the purpose and the intent of um, wanting that? Mm -hmm. Right, no, I understand. Yeah. So. Josh, when you said that uh, the county contacted you back to verify, did you send a new resolution at a lower number then? Correct, we did. So did Dwayne sign the resolution, or who made the resolution? I, I believe he did. So be, um, it, it's not uncommon that we'll correct resolutions that have typos in them um, to meet the system. Is that page 10? The system. So the one, the one on page 10 was the original resolution that we sent. Where do we have the corrected resolution? So the corrected resolution did not get included in the packet. It basically changes in that first part um, the five million one hundred and fourteen thousand two hundred ninety-five to three the three million nine hundred and thirty thousand seven sixty-eight. I don't believe, Bruce, that the county takes our resolution amount as. Um, the submitted levy, though, I think they are going off of this form. Right, but if you sent a document to verify the information and the verified the information was didn't this add up. the wrong number, then they would be thinking that's the number they should use. Correct, and and, and, and that that's kind of they basically the way they've described it to me is there were two numbers and. Um, the wrong number got picked is kind of what the, the county has said to us at this point. Um, we the resolution seems totally correct because it talks about net tax capacity. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure how we sent them a resolution that wasn't approved. But we can deal with that later, I guess. Well, we should have we should have had that in the packet. I would have liked to say yeah. that's pretty important, but. Yeah. Um, we should have been notified that the resolution was corrected too. That's what I see too. Because we didn't pass a resolution for 3.9. I guess, I, you know, the other question is how does this, um, how do we make sure this doesn't happen again? I mean. Yeah, so and that, yeah. that some random or a different employee at Scott County picks the wrong number. I don't, it's something I, I'm still not figuring this out. Yep, so I know, I mean, both Robin and I have already discussed um, kind of how we're going to handle this in the future. To the point of next year, I think we're actually going to go sit down with whoever we send these to at the county 
and say, this is what we intend. How, how do you intend for us to fill out this form um, to make sure that we are filling this out in the manner that the county wants to see it filled out? Is this a required form? No. Not by the state, it is not. Then why do we even have to fill it out? That's my question. It, I, and I guess that, that is a question I know I've reached out to Scott County about it, and they say they've required the form from cities and or townships for the last 15 years when they're submitting stuff. So the, the form is required? It, 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 it is required by Scott, Scott County. Scott County, but not mm, state statute. Not by the state, state, state statute. But Scott County really doesn't have any authority over us. I believe that within the statutes, they are the reporting county for taxes. So like th their authority basically is that it is their job to report the levies to the state of Minnesota. Okay. But state state law trumps state what Scott county, county right. wants. Okay. Yeah. Well, so isn't there some culpability for, for Scott County? Uh, and, 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 and that I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Like I said, I know that Kennedy and Graven is, is working on this and have um, kind of kept me in the loop with who they've talked to and whatnot uh, over, the, over the last week and a half, really. Um, and, and at this point, the best update that I can share without attorney-client privilege is that they are continuing to work with the Department of Revenue. Well, do we need to go into... We, a private. We, we didn't advertise that, so we no. Can't. But I mean, I think that's we, maybe something we, we, we need. I, 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 I want to I know we certainly can, and I, I mean, outside of doing that, I believe we could also just have Scott as the attorney, kind of into individually contact people to update them with where we're at, um, and answer questions at the same time. Why not just order a special meeting? And we could. I mean, it would be another three-day advertisement yeah. to, have, to have the special meeting with the. So the big thing tonight is, is we just got to have a plan together, and then and, I guess then we. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, really tonight the idea is, if, if for some reason we are unsuccessful at the state level um, of getting this, what amounts to now a variance, um, how, how do we expect expect to not only not so much proceed with 2024? I mean, that's kind of clear with where we land, but uh, a little bit with how we do 2024. Um, and I kind of laid those options out a little bit in the packet of the various possibilities, anywhere from borrowing um, from another city fund, um, such as Sanitary, who has uh, over $7 million um, cash they're currently sitting on that would eventually be used for maintenance and other projects, to um, using uh, general fund revenue fund balance and uh, cuts to basically uh, wipe out the 1.2 million in spending and then hopefully return the levy to where it was for 2025. Well, there's a lot of unknowns yet. Yeah. I, you know, I don't feel good about picking a particular option with where we still don't have all the information yet. We don't know what the Department of Revenue is going to say. We don't know what the, the advice of our attorney is going to be. You know, I mean, it's a big crap sandwich where everybody's going to have to take a bite out of this thing. So I don't know where we want to. That was really disgusting. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it, it is. I know it. it uh, sorry. You but, know, I would have liked to use a little bit stronger of a word, but I won't. Just yeah, I know. Right. Think, but yeah. it's, it. you know, I mean, I, do you guys feel comfortable uh, picking a particular option right now? And we don't no. know what. You know, I want the uh, county to go through and find a mistake themselves. And you will find somebody that's culpable. I think it's worthwhile just to discuss through the options mm -hmm. so that there is some sort of a contingency plan and not that we have to accept this pass we, a resolution tonight. Or, yeah, make a motion to approve a particular it's plan. It's more that we got to be able to explain a truth and taxation on Monday. And I guess you want to be able to, that everybody's kind of on the same page. And, and not even on the same page, that. but just to know a general direction of questions people may have or some way that there's a particular lean that way. Um, like Dwayne said, we have our truth and taxation meeting now on Monday night. Um, and is that the deadline? It is not. The it, it, it's not the deadline, but, but, but it is we are forced, we are required to pick an advertising date for when we will have our truth and taxation meeting. And so that kind of is the deadline this year that we set um, for our, our truth and taxation. 
Um, I do believe it is on that form actually. Yeah, used. It's on the form. That, that, that I think is the one reporting number that I remember, I know I've had to report on in the past is when is your truth and taxation meeting going to be? Um, so um, we did report on that back in September that it would be on December 4th and so. Now approvals aren't due until the last day in December. I believe it's five working days after December 20th, I think is how the statute reads or something like that. And so we do have time on the actual approvals themselves. Um, we just have to hold the public hearing on Monday night. Okay. My question is, is, and I was, I read through this. So we did an 18 and a half percent reduction this year or with the numbers as they are. Correct. It says then, like, depending on what options we would pick, you know, there's 63%, 44%, 40%, and that type of stuff. That's what the levy would go to? That is, so, so that, that, is, or, that is the magic of math, basically. So okay. if, if, if you take, we'll just use really round numbers. If you take, t say, 20% of $5 million, you get $1 million. Mm -hmm. So you reduce $5 million by 20%, or $1 million, it goes into $4 million. Now, if you want to increase $4 million by 1%, or, or by $1 million, you're increasing it by 25%, um, because $1 million happens to be 25% of four. And so the magic of math would mean that a decrease from 5.1 to 3.9 is about eight or about 18.5%. Mm -hmm. um, Increasing it back to 5.1, or like I said, I added 5% because that's for talking points. Um, comes out to be, it was the final one, was 34% to get back to what would be 5.3 million. Um, and that, that's just the percentage wise of how. But how that's not where the levy would go up. That, that, well, so, so that is what the levy itself, the total levy would go up. 34% to get from 3.9 up to 5.3. Um, that is not necessarily, as I explained, what would happen to the taxes per se, because taxes only make up, city taxes only make up a third of the overall. Um, oh, and this is taking situation. the overall. Huh? Yeah, this is the overall. So, so our, our 5.3 million only makes up a third of what you would see on your taxes. And so if you look at, when, when I look at my taxes, the city, I've, if I roughly pay $5,000 a year, a little more than that. Um, last year, the city portion was $1,700, mm -hmm. which is about like 34%. And so um, if the $1,700 and I um, moves what amounts to? Um, $1,398 is mine, and mine's right in the same. Yeah. Yeah, so, so if that city portion, say, goes up, 34 percent mm -hmm. that's seventeen hundred dollars will go up 34 oh, percent um, and, okay. and so 34 percent of seventeen hundred is roughly six hundred so but six hundred out of the full five thousand um, is Thank a little over ten percent yeah so so um, while the city portion would go up 34 percent the overall tax bill would be affected a little over ten percent gotcha so I'm um, saving 300 bucks this year and next year not including the value of my home which goes up it's going to be way more than three hundred dollars i, I would be, could be well, well it should be more than double yeah well i mean i mean percent well, i mean it depends on and it would depend on how we approach the situation if if for some reason um if the council decides to uh take what is the recommendation of the Department of Revenue and basically over levy, um, your taxes would go up to what would be their normal, what would have been their normal amount, plus the $300 um, that didn't get collected this year. If, uh, you're, if we decide to do an option where we're just getting ourselves back to normal next year, um, then basically your taxes, if they went down 300 this year, they'll probably go up 302. 310 or something to account for a slight inflation um, over the year before. It, it would really depend on what the council would, how, how the council wants to um, handle 2024 to figure out what would happen in 2025 mm -hmm. and or beyond.
And so part of the discussion I guess I wanted to have tonight um, was assuming worst case scenario um, so that I can continue to at least have the information in my back pocket so that once we have something going on, I'm assuming I'm going to have probably a day or two to turn everything around back to you guys. Um, are, are, are there any preliminary thoughts on, well, may we just, it, ranging anywhere from, you know what, maybe we go the over levy route and, and it, it swings wildly for two years and then we're back on normal. Um, or I've laid out a couple different scenarios if you stretch back the repayment period. Um, is it something where we do a slight over levy and or find fund balance, um, which is the second option I put in there. Um, or the third option was basically fund balance and cuts to get us um, get us down to 3.9 and then try to get it back to where back to normal, we'll say, or where it would have been otherwise in 25, which was option three. I just have to conceptually, uh, my mind is having trouble. Just so if we're using fund balance, that would be okay for like this year. But eventually we have to pay the piper, don't we, mm -hmm. and catch up to that use of fund balance and get, because we won't have that available next year. So we have, still have to have the same big jump. If we use fund balance this year, we still have to have a big jump. So yes, I, 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 mean, I would say at some point, unless we're going to make drastic cuts across the entire city, um, and I would say drastic cuts because we probably have the fund balance to take a year or maybe two, um, I mean, after that, it, if we're not making cuts in terms of the programming and employment and all that, um, it would need to find itself back up above $5 million, if, if that's what you're asking. I'm just trying to make sure I understand that the use of fund balance is just a temporary it, interim thing. It's not something we can rely on. Eventually, we're going to have a jump up. So. I would not recommend it for more than a year. Eventually, that jump up is going to be there without drastic changes to how the city delivers services. Mm -hmm. Right, and it, that I guess still the be benefit would be if there's some non-reoccurring things that that would influence a little bit. Correct. But, I mean, but I mean, I mean, generally, most of everything. Yeah, is I mean, generally, the non-reoccurring things um, will continue to come up. It'll just be a different non-reoccurring thing, if that makes sense. And so, if, if we're spending fifty thousand dollars on a comprehensive plan, we may not have that fifty thousand dollars next year, the year later, but there might be a different plan and/or project that moves into its place. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Poss I mean, but, it's, it's not to say, but possibly, yes. I, I hate for us just to automatically think that. <coughs> I understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. but I, li I like the zero-sum budget kind of idea where you have to justify everything, you just not assume we're going to have the same X like amount of capital kind of thing. But I understand that. I think all options should be on the table, and including, you know, if we have to postpone squad cars, if we have to postpone, if we have a hiring freeze, if somebody leaves, I don't want to do any cuts, but if somebody leaves, maybe we don't fill that position. I, I think we should be looking at all that. Well, I, and, we should be looking at it every, in my personal opinion, every. Well, Sean, and we are. That's why I included the packet. Yeah. That's why I'm kind of having to have a discussion to see where your guys' thoughts are landing to help. Right, and that's what myself, I was just trying to say right Yeah, to help there. guide myself and staff through this process, knowing that. Um, I mean, I saw your preferred choice. Yeah. So um, mine's a little different than that, but. Um, and I can't, I don't know what number it was, where we borrow some and mm, cut the half others. and half. I'll say, I'll say the, the so bar, the borrow some and two. cut others was number two. I think that was, yeah, I, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, right yeah. there, option two. Which one was it? Option two. Yeah. On page six. Yep. But there still isn't, there's still a lot of unknowns. Mm hmm Correct. Yeah. So what, what is the timetable that when do we expect to hear back from? I, I, and I don't even know. How can we even go do the deal on Monday night when we still have stuff hanging? That, those are all questions I've had to Scott and things that we're trying to work through at this point. Um, well, that I, we have tomorrow, basically, because then. You correct. Know. No, and, and I mean, I actually got a text from Scott literally five minutes before this meeting saying, I don't have any further updates from the last time that we talked. Um, so I know that. Um, his, I know that his office is working with the Department of Revenue and that there is certainly some expediency to this, knowing that we are basically up against the end of the year. 
I know that they have pushed that on the Department of Revenue, and as far as I can understand, the Department of Revenue seems to understand that. Um, I will keep, and that's part of why I kind of want to have a discussion, even though we have next to no answers. That way, there's at least some general directions so that once I get answers, I'm assuming um, at that point I will talk to Duane and we'll get an emergency meeting called, basically, um, where we, we get in here and do what we need to do. Um, but that will allow myself and staff to basically be working whatever we need to work um, instead of something where we have an emergency meeting, but we're approving the budgets in two days, and now maybe we have to make these changes to them. Um, that'll allow us to kind of basically create multiple budgets in the background, um, so that way we can take the path that ends up being required of us. Um. Can we call an emergency meeting if, if, for example, for client attorney privilege also? We may be able to. Um, that, that I don't, I'm yeah. not 100% sure you know, on how, the, I, I know the emergency meeting it. statute basically reads I that um, yeah. the mayor, under his or her um, belief in emergency, is able to call a meeting and staff has to do their best to reach out to everybody and get notice out to a lot of people to know that it's happening. But I get, my, my question is, is it only a public emergency meeting or can that be a... That I don't know. Okay. Well, if we're talking three days, I mean... Uh, well, it could be well, the quickest meeting we could have. So an emergency meeting can be called Anything. in five minutes um, as long as effort has been made to ensure that especially the media has been notified that the meeting is happening. But it, you basically have to justify that this is an emergency. So um, you couldn't say, well, we wanted to make sure we got, got a new street sweeper purchased and we had to that's know, know an answer by the end of the week. Like, that's probably not going to hold up as an emergency if somebody challenges it. But um, I do think in a, a situation like this with a deadline and a levy and a budget, I do, my non-legal opinion as a not attorney is that we would be wading into emergency waters, but it would be something that I would certainly run through Scott before. So okay. the, the yeah. meeting Monday night, is that the final approval of the, no. that is not the final approval? That is approval. not the final approval, no. it is just basically the public hearing. So they, okay. Yeah, it is, it, it, it's a public hearing, really it's supposed to be based off of you've received your property tax statement in mail, the city says they're gonna levy this much, now is your chance to show up and support it or not support it in front of the city council. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure you have to show a budget that night, but I think you... We don't. Can. I mean, generally, it, it's pretty accepted that you do, because if someone's showing up with questions about the levy, you're supporting it by showing the budget. So Right. So I think as far as what we're required to do for Monday, we just need to show a budget that fulfills the requirements of the truth and taxation notification. And so whatever under that percentage, and if we have to use use of funds or whatever, num whatever general fund number to fill in the gap, that's what you can do, knowing full well that it might not be that or it might be some configuration. Mm -hmm. But to fulfill our legal responsibilities, I think that's all we need to do is change the numbers there in those two categories. But yeah, and, from and, levy. And, and, and I'm working with Scott. I know, like I said, the last time um, I talked to him, we kind of talked about, well, this is our intended, this is our intended levy and this is our recorded levy just so it's on the table. So if anyone's watching or asking, then that information is out there. But um, I will certainly work with Scott to see what, what is legally required of us and what he recommends we discuss basically at Monday night's meeting. <clears throat> and so tonight's meeting is well, I, to I, I would, try I would, to get a sense of where where we feel comfortable yeah, so basically where the majority of the council feels comfortable um, as a contingency plan so okay. that we can start working on basically contingency budgets if we need to okay. and I guess maybe, maybe to, to lead that discussion as you guys have read through the packet I know Sean kind of mentioned he um, of these three options, his preference would be number two. Um, is there any sort of appetite for uh, option number one, which would amount for borrowing the entirety of the uh, amount, and then over a period of time, 
one year, 12 years. I, I have one, three, five, just for um, number's sake in the packet, over levying to pay that amount back. Is, is there any sort of appetite by the council for that sort of option? Well, my concern is, is that we know that we need an additional trunk line if this city is going to grow. And that would affect some of the money that we would be using mm -hmm. for that trunk line. So if we take it up now to cover this gap and leave it decimated, and now all of a sudden two years later we need a trunk line, I don't, that's going to spike it even farther. We're still paying off the initial loan or the, the money back into it. I'm just worried that that, that unknown jump is going to be not 48% or 49%, or that's a number two, but your option. So, so when I get, and it's, I know. 63%, it's yep. 100%. And if, if that, if, if it's the sanitary fund, I guess, that council has a problem with, we can certainly look at other funds. We do have a few others um, coming out of either, the, both the electric and the water do have a large balance, though those numbers are controlled by the utility commission. Um, so it would be working with the utility commission to come to terms with that particular option. Um, I, th I thought the council has ultimate control over the com utility commission. I, I don't, so I, I believe the council basically is able to appoint the utility commission, um, but my understanding is the utility commission kind of controls their own finances, if that semi makes sense. At the, at, at the leisure of the council though. I'm pretty sure I've asked Scott that before. And, and I would have The to elected go. officials control the purse strings. I, they get to run that segment, but they ultimately report to I, I, w I would have to ask Scott, I guess, exactly how that would work in a situation. Well, I know like I've, I know I've yeah. asked before. I mean, it, theoretically, we could disband the commission. It, it, it's an, you could I disband the commission, but I, I, think, I think there's certain powers the commission are given due to the creation of the commission. Okay. And it should be within that enabling resolution. It should I think not only that, but I mean also within state statute. State yeah. statute calls out yeah. utility commissions quite a bit. I think there's more to it than you might think. I'm not sure it's just an enabling. Okay. I think there's a statutory issue here. And it's like uh, Shakopee tried to disband the utilities, and I'm not sure if we're set up the same way, but it, there's more to it. No. So, so, so all that to be said, there are other potential purses of money. I mean, the, the city actually, between especially our three enterprise funds, water, electric, and sewer, we do have a very healthy cash balance but I know that all three of those funds have those balances for various projects and or things that they are doing going forward. Um, so they're not just sitting on giant piles of cash. I guess it would be worthwhile to talk. I think you asked the question for my response would be I'm not I, I would favor somewhere in between one and two whatever we can delay and defer would be my um, my stance first of all I, I think we still need to come up with what a true if this wouldn't have happened we still haven't finalized where we think we we're gonna right. land we need to come up with that final what would the levy have been in if we went through the full exercise but after that uh, I, I guess I'd be looking at whatever, what can we delay and defer. Some of these things are non-reoccurring, so we can absorb them next year. It's not going to affect. Um, I know you said we always have things coming up, but that's where you get into managing your capital purchases in some ways and stretching it out further. So that's that's one. That's, I guess, my approach is what can we delay and defer? What are things that are not? The city hall remodel is an example. Um, we're, we're not far enough along to actually say we're going to do something there, so that's something that's easily can be postponed till the following year. We can certainly do the conceptualization of it or estimates, whatever we want, talk about it next year. But we don't need to pull a trigger on it next year. And, and <clears throat> some of those kinds of things, I know we're going to talk about some of the, maybe some other things there, debt service. We don't need to add to debt service. <coughs> We don't need to borrow just to put it aside in debt services. It would be another one that could easily, in my mind, 
and there may be some other things uh, to try to delay or defer things. Um, but whether it's this number or what number that number is, 558 or some other number. Yeah, the other number I just, that was basically the halfway point of, of picking a halfway number. Mm -hmm. it, obviously, like you said, you can go left, right, one way or the other with that was that being the amount. Um, I know when you go back to page eight and I've kind of got the list of the various items that, mm -hmm. uh, exact numbers if you were looking to cut out items. Um, speaking of the city hall maintenance remodel, that was $100,000 that we were putting aside knowing that whether we remodeled city hall or didn't was being recommended to us to, um, we at least have maintenance on this building. So instead of coming up with a, $500,000 million dollar bond maintenance in the future. That, that was an attempt to start setting money aside um, for those future potential needs, however they ended up landing in the future. You know, on our balance sheet, we have designated renovation funds in our general fund balance. Correct. Which is confusing to me. Why wouldn't we be using that for this? I mean, I, I think this, this would get added to it. I, I know, yeah, so basically this is just kind of essentially adding into that okay. renovations fund, knowing that um, it would be significant the amount of updates that they were talking, roof and HVAC and tuck pointing the entire outside of the building and very mm -hmm. windows um, need, need to be updated. So the substantialness of the updates just maintaining the building um, was why so you're, you're for, thinking when you, the substantial update is going to be more than I forget what we have in there a million and a half two million dollars in that renovation so, so, so that million and a half is, that million and a half if you remember right is what we use to purchase the parks building mm -hmm. with so that we wouldn't have to borrow well I didn't know which fund which designated fund that came out of but on our balance sheet we refer to renovation funds so the park the purchase money came out of the so, renovation? So, so that, that renovation fund, I don't believe, is not an actual fund. It is basically an allocation within right. the general fund. It's a designation. Yep. Right? And yeah, and that's, that is what we decided to, we, we had it basically set aside for renovations and or building a new city hall. And we decided instead of borrowing money for the parks building, um, we would just use that, that money now um, so that we wouldn't have to borrow for it. What, what's left after that's subtracted from the designated renovation funds? Is it about five hundred thousand then? Or I think uh, it we were at, we were one point five. Um, I think with closing costs we we're one point one five or one point two or something like that. I would imagine we have somewhere around three hundred thousand dollars left in there. Okay. I would I would assume without going through and looking at exact invoices and whatnot. But yes, this one hundred thousand would have gotten added on top of whatever. So then, to come up with a number in my mind, you're thinking whatever we do to city hall is going to be in excess of four or five hundred thousand dollars. It could. I, I okay. just know. I just know what they talked about was was quite extensive as they were walking through the building. Okay. Um, and the work that would be needed. I'm just trying to get in the same page as you. Yep. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Then I mean, going through that list, the one hundred fifty thousand. Um, was to bring that new building then uh, uh, up to making sure that it was climate controlled and whatnot over there. Uh, that we had 130000 in ARPA funds that we didn't spend on trail and sidewalk. Oh, Josh, before you get there, yeah. where does that show up in the budget, that 150000 The 150000 for the new park remodeling, yeah. um, that was not actually budgeted for because we were expecting to do it in 2023. And I told Matt to put that on hold. So that was the one where we, we bought the park building unbudgeted for, and we right. knew that we had this amount to get it to usable. Um, and because we were using the 1.5 to buy the building and get it to usable, before, we would have brought those back and said, okay, we need to insulate it, and it's going to cost this amount. Um, we'd take it out of that same fund. So mm. um, the, when I say we have 150000 for new park building, that's because I basically told Matt to put that on hold and let's hold that money for, for not using it at this point instead of going out and getting quotes. So what, what we previously were thinking would have cost $150,000 to get up to snuff coming out of this 1.5, I said don't touch it. 
So that why, why are you saying something different now? Why are you saying not to take it out of the 1.5? Because we may need that 1.5 for this situation. Like, I, I, I'm solely saying leave the building as cold storage at this point until we get our hands around um, this tax levy situation so that way we don't spend $150,000 when we may need it for something else. Okay. Well, I'm confused because you're, you're saying that we're suggesting we take something out of the budget that was never in the budget. It's in the side lines. You're right. I, you're right. As, as, I, as I look at this and hear your situation, correct. That 150 was never actually in the budget. You could argue that that is, in fact, in fund balance, not in or in, in, in the fund balance or of the 101.5 million right. instead of budget. So you are right. correct. That That's not in the 2024 thing. That is correct. That is not in the budget. That was and just to clarify, because yep. I, I sent this email back yeah. to you, Josh. Matt, when we asked about this before, the number you thought was like seventy-five thousand to do that, or some number less. Because I remember asking that, thinking that it's going to be higher than that, like a hundred thousand. I think you said you had a, a guy walk through and gave you a, a number. Is the number changed, or the work going to be different, or are your thoughts different? <clears throat> No, we're still right around that seventy-five, eighty thousand. This is just what's remaining out of the, um, what was it, like you said, I think it was 1.3 is what we figured total for the building, and we bought, bought it for 1.1. So that was the remaining is the 150 for it. But no, I was, I'm not planning on using 150,000 to remodel. That's just what's left over for it if needed. But no, mm -hmm. I'm still right. As of two weeks ago, I got insulation prices. We, everything's okay. ready to go, and I'm under the seventy-five thousand, even. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. it, it makes uh, total sense. But I get easily confused, and you guys are doing a great job. <laughs> that confusing you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry for interrupting, Josh. Then. Nope. So this is all that's left is the ARPA funds. That's all we have left is that hundred and thirty grand. No, that was that, that's 130 grand from the 2023 budget that was rolled that was being planned to roll into the 2024. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. otherwise, ARPA funds were being also being used to replace parks equipment and um, squad car. Like we were basically using up the ARPA funds in 2024 um, for various equipment and and that trail sidewalk expansion. How does that let us use that money? It, mm -hmm. it won't let us use that money to solve this problem. At this point, we, the guidance that's been given was that anybody who received less than $10 million may use those funds really however they wish. And so, yes, at this point, these particular projects, if they were to be wiped, you could use those ARPA funds for this particular issue. Um, it would just then be whenever uh, the payment for these came back, then it would be using levy dollars instead mm -hmm. of ARPA funds. So I get the feeling like I, I'm trying to be hopeful and optimistic that we'll, we don't even have to go this route, that yep. maybe we'll get some something from the state. Yep. But my gut's telling me that the way you're approaching this, that, and I don't know, maybe if you have, and I'm asking you, have you and Scott said that the chances are really rare that the state is giving us that option to correct this and just go with our original plan? Or are you really expecting, like, 80% that we're going to have to find some money somewhere, somehow. <clears throat> What's your gut telling you <laughs> in your discussion with <clears throat> Scott? Because my feeling is, is you're not expecting the state to come but, and say we can do this, this, and this and just get back to where we wanted to be. I will say I'm hopeful. So, and th this is what I told Robin right before, and even Dwayne right before it started, that the Department of Revenue has now been aware of our situation um, from an attorney perspective of being contacted for over a week now, and they haven't told us no yet. So along those lines, I'm hopeful. I don't know exactly all of the arguments that are being used by our attorneys, but I know they've got a, a couple different fire pokers. I, I don't know what you want to say that they're using with the state, and the state has not outright told us no yet. I think in a situation like this, no news is probably good news because it'd be pretty easy to tell us no and to walk away from it. That being said, this meeting tonight is completely contingency. 
of trying to build plans in place knowing that we don't have a lot of time. The state may come back on December 12th and say, <laughs> you know what, we'll allow you to levy for uh, 5.1 or whatever it is, and which we don't intend to, but you're going to have to know <laughs> everybody and get your budget together and get that approved by the standard date. And so if that's the case, we would scramble to get a letter put together and mailed out to every single person, however they need us to mail it out and get that taken care of. Maybe they come back and say, you can certainly go forward, but um, we'll only allow you to levy at the amount you levied last year, which I think was like 4.86 or something like that, um, about $200,000 less. Um, if that's the case, then um, hopefully we have stuff in place. We will bam, bam, bam. <coughs> Let's move this through. Um, or maybe they come back on the 12th and say, sorry. And I'm just saying the 12th as, as a date out there. Right. They come back and say, sorry, it is what it is. The state statute, <laughs> you got to do the 3.9. At which point, I don't want to then be scrambling on December 12th to get something into place for Christmas when I could have spent the last two weeks at least getting preliminary stuff in place uh, so that we can basically have four budgets in front of us. And as soon as we hear from the state, we can grab the appropriate one um, or appropriate two that I can then bring back to you guys and we can we can hash out the final one from there instead of starting from scratch as soon as I hear from the state. Who at the state is the one that will ultimately sign off on it? The revenue commissioner? The commissioner or? of the Department of Revenue mm -hmm. if, or director or whatever that title is. The, oh. Whoever is the head of the Department of Revenue, I'm assuming, is the... Um, decision maker over there. Okay. If you have a contact, that would no, be a good time to I'm check just kind of. I was just going to Google it. I'm just kind of curious who um, that is. But we've talked. When we've met, we we've already laid a plan for contacting our legislators. Well, yeah, that was and all that stuff. And I mean, and, 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 and that works. is something I was going to talk to Scott about tomorrow because I know that um, if we haven't heard one way or the other, then by tomorrow. Uh, Dwayne and I may start kind of reaching out to legislators and see if we can get any help from that front. Mm -hmm. Okay. Has the Minnesota League of Cities been any help? The League of Cities, basically similar to our auditors and the Department of Revenue, have basically said uh, what they have seen for levy incorrections uh, or incorrect yep. preliminary levies is the Kind of options I've laid out here uh, that uh, the, the, the state has basically always recommended to people this and nobody's ever pursued it any further and that's that that kind of gets another thing that you know also the Department of Revenue says it happens all the time too I don't know if it happens at the magnitude that we're at or if it happens larger or smaller, but, and that's their answer that Josh told me, it's that it happens all the time. Well, no, that's think that's that's yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, I mean, so, so they've been real forceful at, and, and at, at saying double levy. I, I think it might not happen job. as often to this magnitude where it's, what, 20% of our mm -hmm. thing, whereas a lot of uh, cities don't have LGAs at 20% of their yeah. budget. So they make a mistake and all of a sudden something happens, they need more money. They can't, those kind of things mm -hmm. are more common, I think. But to, uh, to be 20% off or whatever number off is probably not that common, I don't think. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I can't speak to other cities that it happens to. Um, if, if I was to take a stab, it probably happens to smaller smaller towns who don't quite have the, the staffing or whatnot. Um, so. Okay. so we set our preliminary at 5.1%, knowing that we would want to whittle that down. Correct. Have we done any work on whittling it down? Yeah. So, so I, yeah. So we were down to four point six percent. I believe was the last budget conversation we had, which was like five, five million fifty thousand or around there. We were down about seventy thousand dollars, I believe. Which, which is why, 
in the pack, when I'm describing numbers, I describe that we, oh, I think it was on page one, talks about how we were 1,183,527 dollars short. That's in the first paragraph, four lines up from the bottom of the first paragraph at the end of the line. So this means the proposed levy is one million one hundred eighty-three dollars five hundred and fifty-two dollars short. I mentioned later in the memo, I think on the bottom of page two, uh, option one, I say we would only be borrowing one. If we went with the budget as we've discussed so far, we'd be borrowing one million one hundred and six six thousand dollars nine hundred thirty, um, which is the difference from the preliminary recorded and what we are down to at that point. So we had brought it down. Um, I know we had, we've had previous conversations. Um, uh, Bruce has mentioned he'd like to see it a little bit lower, um, but there was never really any full direction from the council as if we were going to take it lower, so it kind of it kind of sat where it was um, at that point. So I guess so far I've heard from Sean, both Sean and Bruce, that um, they're not crazy about option one. No, they, option two either. is slightly more palatable in that it's kind of a combination of uh, one and three together. Um, and, if, and if that's kind of where the direction of council wants to go with this contingency, we can certainly work on uh, what that would look like. I know I mentioned in here, um, was it in option two or three? One of them I mentioned, um, I guess what I would argue are nothing is easy pickings per se, but um, stuff to pull off. We've generally been pretty conservative with interest with the intent of uh, using that interest for future projects and or equipment so we wouldn't have to levy for it. Uh, that being said, um, we could uh, claim about another $75,000 in revenue just from our expected interest payments in 2024 uh, that are allocated to the general fund. I know um, across all funds, we're expecting almost $800,000 in interest um, to be paid out from our CDs just in 2024 alone. Uh, and about 15% of that would come back to the general fund, which amounts to about $125,000 and we were budgeting for $50,000 in there, so that means we would have roughly another $75,000 in revenue that we could claim off of interest CDs. Um, we also have uh, our golf transfer of mm -hmm. a little over $97,000, um, with them sitting on an expected fund balance of about $620,000 going into 2024. That is another area that, I mean, we are ultimately responsible if something crashes over there, but. Um, we could basically um, delay the transfer for a year and mm -hmm. claim back $97,000 there. Uh, yeah, delay it or e reduce it. Re delay or reduce, how, how yeah. many, yeah. So, uh, I mean, there are certainly, I think those are the two of some of the easiest ones um, to uh, move into place as we're looking to balance things out. Uh, yeah. I, I'm comfortable with... Um, Option number two, you know, depending on if we want to borrow a half, you know, a third, you know, whatever, not necessarily just at a half, but yep. so I, I guess to Bruce's point, somewhere in between one and two. And I guess I can put to, try to put together for Monday night just to share with you guys since it's our next planned meeting. Um, I will say a couple different options, or, or I'll say a few more options except landing them with the borrowing por a portion and uh, fund balancing and or cutting a portion um, so that you guys have those and um, hopefully by Monday night I'll have more information so that we can um, have a better idea of what's happening and maybe by then we'll we'll find out that this has all been an exercise in futility but um, yeah since that's our next planned meeting um, I'll also uh, keep you guys updated with emails and phone calls, um, just kind of with where we're at, so that 
you, if you have any questions that come to, uh, I can certainly pass them on or try to get the information pulled together for you guys to try to get this all together. You may not know this or the answer to this, but when um, your property taxes go up by a certain percentage amount, I can't recall the number, if it's 20% or I something. I so. And mm -hmm. the state gives you a refund or gives you credit for that. Does that affect? It's like the homestead credit? No. Um, it's uh, a no. special credit for when property it's taxes go up. Take up. Big Does job. that affect the the min municipality or the county I, in what they get? I, I, I don't know that off the top of my head, so I don't want to say one way or the other, but I can certainly look it up. I, I know what you're talking about, because I mean, I, I think as you talk about it, as I've looked at the various, for my own personal information, when I was looking at my taxes as my property value spiked of whether, I know there's basically two ways of recouping. There's the homestead credit and the um, when, when your taxes go way up in one year. Yeah, it's yeah. a property it, tax refund. Yep, there yeah. you go. That's, and yeah, it's, yep. it's yeah. 20 or 25 percent, and it's just a form that you fill out online and send it. Tax time kind of. Yes. yes. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. And but payout is in, payout, if you are due a refund, payout is in July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, okay, maybe homestead credit's not the right word I'm using. Homestead. No, homestead is different. I, yeah, so what, but I know there's two different ways to be able to get eligible for that. Because I think once homestead you hit a certain income bracket, you're no tax. longer eligible right. unless your property values spike up a certain amount within a year. Because that homestead credit comes right on your property tax yes. Correct. statement. Yeah. It, they give you credit right away for Yeah, it's just a comparison between last year's property taxes and yep. this year's property mm -hmm. taxes. And I think it's 20 or 25 percent. Mm -hmm. And then if you're 65 years of age and older, you get an additional. Correct. But I do not know that off the top of my head. I will get that. Because I had the same question morning. that he had. Yeah, I was wondering. I will get that tomorrow morning and get that over to you guys. Where does the money yeah, I'm, come from? I'm looking at <laughs> section two. Where does any of the money two. come from? <laughs> and I'd like to draw the purse strings around here, too. The. Uh, I mean, the second year, we that to, to know that information because the chances are, at least, from my the city taxes make up almost half of the total tax, so it's conceivable a lot of people then would qualify. I would think. Oh, for your property in, taxes, they make yeah. up half. Yeah, in, it, in 20 2025. So you know, because if that levy, if we made that big of a jump. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, everybody would qualify. I would think. I, I I thought you know to get over the pain quickly is the route to go, but I do want to or do want to mention or comment. There's a lot of people that escrow for their property Correct. taxes, and to have that kind of swing would mean three years of substantial changes, and their payments on that third year would go up conceivably quite a bit. And the other issue is that working at a bank, we collect obviously you collect that money up front, so. And the, their mortgage company is going to be over collecting with such a wide range in one year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that under that, collecting, and they have to come up with the money all at once, or spread it out, and then over collecting. Yeah, so and then that would be that third year they would over collect probably. Right. So yeah. there is uh, something just to keep in mind as maybe a reason why we try to soften it. Yeah. But. But. The, the other, and you can beat yourself up trying to think about this, but the more fair thing, I think, is to try to get it done quickly because you don't know who's, there's going to be different owners a year from now, for whatever, our tax capacity, the difference between commercial and residential could be different. Right now it's favoring the residential because we had a big increase commercial. It could swing the other way, so I, the year I, of a big increase could affect the residential more than. I I do wonder if we're gonna, just so far for I mean having run out of residential property basically I know, a lot of the residential increase is gonna start becoming from just increasing individual property taxes, whereas we do still have commercial activity going on, so at least over the next year or two. Hopefully that swings a little bit more in the commercial side just because that's the only thing that's really able to grow at this point. And um, we do, I mean, we are seeing expansions of various businesses across town. Um, 
building permits for uh, businesses on the east side of town are coming in. Um, so hopefully that will help soften the, I mean, ultimately what amounts to a levy increase is not immediately felt by people because it is more spread out with um, additional tax payers on the rolls, basically. Well, residential people, they really favored this year because values went down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The worst case scenario would be that commercial would go down, residential would go up. So even if everything stayed the same, you're, you you might have a 70% increase instead of a 60 or whatever the number is. Mm -hmm. Your residential went down on so, the Scott County side? Because yeah, so yours on the, didn't, mine, mine did it. So, so on, on the Scott County side, um, if you look at, I, I've included in the budget packets that we talked about of the our levy will affect the property owner this this amount. Um, if you look at that, uh, not only do they have the percentage of whether you went up this percent or down this percent, they actually also include the number of properties that would have been affected. And if you look, oh, I bet 80% of the properties on the Scott County side are on the decrease. Um, but we don't get something like that from the sewer side. But anecdotally, um, I think on average, most sewer people went up anywhere from zero to five percent. I think mine was about four and a half percent up. Um, so while, while I think Le Scott County spiked them harder and now they're bringing them back, whereas Le Sewer didn't spike them quite as hard and so uh, they're still moving up. Does that make sense? So yes, mine went up like yours did while well, everyone well, my, on the Scott my County side. Value went up but taxes came down just because of Yeah. But it didn't come down. What did yours come down? Mine came down from 459 to 421. Wow. Mine went up. The lunch is on Bruce. I wish I could sell it for 459. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a number. Mm hmm Okay. So you got your marching orders. I've I got guess. marching orders. I'll like I said I'll get you guys something on Monday to look at um, that kind of focuses on two a little bit um, and different options on the scope of um, borrow more or cut more uh, and then like I said I'll I'll keep you guys updated with both mm -hmm. emails and phone calls kind of, of where the situations are at um, as I learn things so that way we have best information possible Josh can I ask a favor I'm on yeah. vacation Monday um, with plans yep. would you be able to send a text to my phone that says you know there's an email out there or just some some way to let me know because I'm yep. not going to be home much. Um, if so, if I said okay, so I will be up, at council meeting, but I won't be at home. During knowing that I don't always check emails on weekends, even um, I don't know. I think Robin checks her emails all the time, so it wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, is that would everybody like a text if I send an email out just so you can jump on it? Sure. Um, yeah. Just just so you know it's there. Sure. That'd be super. Or maybe, maybe you don't text and prefer to call. Do like you always do. Text would, Text is fine. would just work fine for me. Okay. And then Pigeon. Monday night, can we get a copy of that other? Yes. And then, um, well, I, whether we do a, an emergency meeting or not, but I, I'd really like to see what our options are if this was a mistake from Scott County. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that I don't know if we have any information on at right. this point um, as to whether what would happen if this is a Scott County mistake. I know. Um, and then, uh, okay. Yeah, no, so. I mean, and then that was just, I don't know if we have, like, I don't know if the options change at all just based off a of state statute, but I will certainly talk to Scott and see what his thoughts are on, or if he knows of any precedent of what has happened in the past if a county has made a mistake. Well, as a Lesueur County resident, I want to know if it was a Scott County mistake. No. So. <laughs> and I would hope you do, too. Yeah. The rest of them probably don't, but, uh, you know, because <laughs> they're on the Scott County side. But um, so a copy of that memo, and then could you clarify with Scott also the Utility Commission if we have to borrow money from that, yep, if it has to be approved by them? Or I'd like to know what that hierarchy is a little bit. Because yeah, I, I've got a notice. We approve them. They're, they're not elected officials that, you know, we, we assign them. And, and I don't know if it's very similar to, um, so like the EDA, the EDA levies, and we are able to set that levy, um, but the EDA does have spending power. So once well, once we approve the EDA's levy, um, under state statute, uh, 
basically the EDA has the power to spend that money towards EDA goals um, without actually coming back to ask the city council for right approval. but I, but I still think that the city council could theoretically if they're sitting on five hundred thousand dollars and we need it we could pull it from the EDA the EDA correct and I'm almost positive that was the same thing with the utilities commission too yeah, I just don't, I don't want to get in a in a no. situation where utilities commission says well if you're going to take five hundred thousand of our money we're going to charge the city eight percent interest or whatever I, you know yeah whatever and the going yeah, interest so, yeah rate so we, we have the ability and I explained it in here to set interest rates uh, when we're certainly borrowing for ourselves so the sanitary fund we would have that ability um, like I said I'll check on the utility commission to see if they would be the ones that would set the help with us set the terms or if it would be something that we'd be able to set the terms on our own okay but yeah I, I will certainly check on that I just want to know yeah that that whole hierarchy of, yep. of, Okay, the article um, that uh, was written in the paper, uh, Scott County does not feel responsible. Yeah, no, it's, exactly. Uh, so when you made that comment, just a sentence or two ago, Cindy sure Geis. That, uh, yes. Not well, see, LeSueur, position. unfortunately, LeSueur doesn't get the paper until Thursday. <laughs> I haven't read it yet, so I, 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 <laughs> Scott I County it. gets it on Wednesday. We get ours. I got it from a text from Matt. He took a picture of it and sent it to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get mine on Wednesday. It's, it's, you're, all, you're not hand-delivered. You're mail. Yeah, I'm mine's mail. hand-delivered where I live on Lee Sewer County. That's the difference why I get mine on Wednesday. Matt's so, kind of a big deal. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, can I ask a budget question because I'm still getting yeah. confused and this, I, um, you email me and explain this to me again, um, so I, I think I've got it. <clears throat> but on the budget, in I use the park board. The 130,000? 130,000 number. Yep. I, I don't, can you explain why there's no use of funds in the 2024 budget? So let's not use the park fund because those are ARPA funds um, for that 130,000. Okay. But, um, say the let's say we had a um the f-250 that matt's carrying over that uh we've been trying to buy forever but supply chains and strikes out in detroit won't let us um that would be something where in maybe that's even a bad one because it's equipment fund we're potentially using for but in theory that's thirty-five thousand dollars we're expecting to spend in 2023 to purchase this truck um now, there's been a couple different budgeting practices for this, and so we're basically trying to change over from one system to the other, and maybe Robin can explain, but I won't make her since her voice is gone. Um, in the past, if it was 2021, and we had, well, we'll say 2018, and we were gonna buy this truck, and we were unable to, we'll push it over to 2019, they would basically take those funds, and it'd be almost, it was then not put into the budget, correct? And it was, I don't even know what you call it in terms of. Just listed on the assigned funds. <laughs> it was basically listed. There was a spreadsheet kept um, on the. Uh... Go ahead, Robin. Um, I'll try my best. Uh, so internal spreadsheet of assigned funds would be kept with the intent of what to use those assigned funds for. So it would say if it's 35,000 F-250, um, 130,000 parks, sidewalk, or like so if, if that was the description, when it would come time to use it, then um, I, I don't believe they did a budget adjustment, but it would come directly from those assigned funds. So they didn't want to budget them again since they were already budgeted in prior years and just not utilized. So then when I got here, I questioned you all, that is still funds we're spending then in 2019, we should know that we're, we're spending the funds in 2019. So what we did, instead of moving them to this assigned funds internal spreadsheet, is we basically said, okay, we'll take that $35,000 from this year be 2023, and we will move it to 2024, but we won't be affecting the tax levy because we've already collected the money for that $35,000. And so instead of having the revenue balance be your tax levy, we now have a line item called use of fund balance, which um, would then offset that 35 
So your revenue, balancing revenue, would come out of use of fund balance if it's been previously levied for instead of the property tax levy. Is that, does council see that list? You said an internal. It, it, they don't do it. it they don't do we, we don't do it anymore. But, but, okay. Yeah, yeah. Since, I, since Robin and I started, we don't do that anymore. So that, that list has all but disappeared. So all those funds are gone, whatever that slush fund was or whatever you want to call it. That they're, they're not necessarily gone, but now the now they're in the budget. They're so accounted for in the budget. So you can see them in the budget as a use of funds. Um, so that way you can say, okay, we did have this F-250 in the past. We're not double levying for it again this year. Now we are using funds that are already in the fund balance that we levied for previously. Yeah, but my opinion is, is that those decisions still should come to the council. Well, they are. That's not just doing. being made at the internal level amongst the directors. Well, no, they are. That's why they're in the budget. Like, we bring the budget to you with this is the equipment we want to purchase. It's actually better this okay. way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. I yeah. see what you're saying now. Yeah. Okay. I, I was thinking you guys were making those decisions. No. Just no. There's this extra line item here. Because you're also seeing now a revenue line that's showing um, transfer, transfer from assigned funds. Like, we added a couple different whether it was transfer from equipment fund or transfer from assigned funds to try to be more transparent about where is the money coming for the budget okay. compared to previously. Okay. So then do you reconcile if the number's not the same and credit back or so if it was a If it came in less, you mean? Like if yeah. the expenditure came in less? I guess we haven't come across that yet, so we would probably hold it back in the assigned funds, like if his truck came in 30000 instead of 35000 then it would. Yeah, um, I'm assuming that. Um, the transfer at, would happen at the end of the year. At that point, you'd show a surplus of $5,000 at the end of the year. Right. Um, well, it's similar to what I'm used to where accruals, the same, same idea, but we did have to balance the accruals to make sure that they're still legitimate in a sense. That you're still going to use it for the purposes intended when you set it aside as funds. Yep. Because I, if you don't use it after a year or two, then you shouldn't have it in there. Because we haven't done the transfers. We don't do them at the at the start of the fiscal year. We wait till the end of the year. So even if the budget said, let's just use that thirty-five thousand um, transfer from assigned funds, and it came in at thirty thousand, we would only transfer the thirty thousand. We'd only transfer what was needed. And right. then the remainder would still be sitting in assigned funds for future use. Right, but it's unassigned, and that's my my thing. Is you expense it before you should credit back the expense account probably mm -hmm. for an un, unspent, well, not spent for purpose intended. Um, I, so if you set aside fifty thousand for a truck and it costs you ten thousand, then you have forty thousand sitting there. Unassigned. But it shouldn't just sit there. You should credit it back because you didn't spend that much. What credit it back to. General whatever you expensed it. Well, and so I mean that, that that money would be sitting in the general fund. So right. at the end of the year, when the audit comes through, the auditors would say, "Hey, you guys have a forty thousand forty thousand dollars surplus. Would you like to assign this or keep it? Because we're required to keep fifty percent of our budget unassigned by the state. Um, and then usually over anything over fifty percent, they say, "Where would you like to assign this to?" Which is how we started to accumulate things like the fire pension contingency, um, the aquatic center contingency. Uh, rent the rental house. Some of that money grew up through there, um, and so if, if this thirty-five thousand dollar truck, we'll be able to get it for thirty. At the end of the year, we'll have a five thousand dollar surplus, and then we'll get to decide where would you guys like to assign this or unassign it. But it will certainly track in the general fund um, as now having that money for whatever use we intend to use it for. Then, so the true expenditure comes through, Bruce, not the like. Right, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yep. So then in the budget, then it's safe to say that there's nothing in the use of funds balance. So next year's budget, you're assuming no transfer use of funds. That's accurate then. Uh, I was just surprised to see a zero there. For um, use of fund balance right now, correct. There. In the budget. And that, that answered my question because it's ARP. I was wondering why why isn't there use of funds for 130? And the answer yep. is because it's used and, and, ARPA and, and, funds. And some of that may have been, I think our last last budget was the 24th of October. Um, I think at that point we were expecting to spend all the funds. Now as we get here closer to the end of the year, we'll realize that some of these aren't going to come through. The, the truck is still not going to come through for us. And so, ARPA, though. ARPA money. Yeah. Or, or, I mean, if there is something... 
um, that was unspent. Um, as we now are a month out, we know better what that is, and that can get moved into the 2024 budget if, if that's how we, if we want to continue to keep it on the list to purchase. Um, but it won't affect the tax levy because that money has already been accounted for um, in that way. What's going to happen to the old truck then? Do we sell that or does it just get reabsorbed in? I mean, I'm wondering if we should do an audit on excess equipment that I know it comes before us occasionally, but do we need this, all these trucks? And what's, you know, it's like when we get rid of police cars at 60,000 miles. Um, so I, th I think, I mean, a lot of times um, we'll, we'll, we can, we'll cert we can certainly look at them. I know we always do with what equipment do we have, what's, what's certainly working. Um, could, we, could we get a better deal by the parks department buying an, a used vehicle instead of having to go out and get one instead of trading it in? Um, I know the last few years that hasn't been the case. It's been far more lucrative to trade stuff in. Um, I wasn't in, I, I don't know off the top of my head, were we planning on trading in whatever vehicle it was and doing kind of the Yeah, swap? we have, <clears throat> since I've been doing this, um, everything we've purchased, we've traded in or we've sold it on min bid. Okay. And we present that to you. We're not, we're not buying equipment just to keep that no. old existing equipment. I've only done that once and I brought that to you guys when I bought a sidewalk machine last year. They wanted to give me absolutely nothing for the trade in and we never had a backup sidewalk machine. So it was worth that to keep that for the sure. $7,000. And I brought that to you guys saying my plans are to keep it and buy a new machine and just keep this one. Otherwise, everything gets traded in or sold. We don't, I don't just keep buying and saving old equipment. Okay. Same with the police I was, department. I was saying if you want extensive list of all the equipment we have, actually we, um, that is in our uh, CIP every year, kind of a, this is all the equipment we have. This is when we expect to potentially replace it. Um, this is what we guess the cost. Well, we, you know, a number of years ago when we did start looking at that more carefully um, and actually develop a plan over a 10 year period. Yep. We did get that information, but that doesn't necessarily mean what our needs are. I mean, that's what you guys get paid for to understand. But I just, it, where I was going with that is I get a lot of comments that from taxpayers that, boy, the city sure loves having nice shiny new trucks driving around and they see them circling around all day long and you know, I hope you're correcting them so. by when they say that those comments because that's not what our employees are doing. We're not just driving. Around oh no 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 no! They just well, see just they see a lot of new guys work. Right, so I'm not understand Matt, that. I'm not saying that and they don't. Our right. equipment are is not all brand new. I will tell you, we do a very good job of keeping the equipment very nice. Um, but I have a 14 year old plow truck right now. Yep. Uh, I have one brand new plow truck. And I have an 11-year-old plow truck. Mm -hmm. My supervisor drives a 12-year-old plow uh, pickup truck because I believe it can extend its life past the 10 years that we have it. Right. So, I, I mean, we take our vehicles and we take very good care of them. If we didn't, they would all be rusty after 10 years working in the salt. So, mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I just, I'm, all I'm saying is I hope those people that make those comments, you correct them because our guys work very hard to keep our equipment very nice for the city and the residents of New Prague. Right, and I'm just saying, you know, perception's reality and that you're right, I didn't know that. I'm not, I, you know, I, we pay you to manage that, those vehicles and whatnot. But I'm just telling you that as taxpayers and they see, and when I said they see them driving around, I didn't mean they were not working driving around, just when they're going to and from their jobs, there's a lot of nice new equipment that's out there. And my contention has always been over the last 11, 12 years that I've been on the council is that just because it's, if something is working just fine, I mean, we're spending $300,000 for a new payloader that we might still get five more years out of um, just because it's on the, on that cycle of and, being moved out every 10 years. And, and I will say we do work every single year um, to figure out what can we push. Cause every, every, every time you can push something back a year, I mean, that's, exponentially saving into the future. Um, what can we push? What can't we push? Something might come up sooner because we got ourselves a lemon of a plow truck and mm -hmm. it's falling apart. Um, some things you can push back a few years. I know there, um, one of the things in our budget, for example, is IT equipment for $42,000. Some of that is an attempt to get our IT equipment on a cycle. Um, so we would probably be purchasing laptops slightly sooner than we need them because otherwise, I don't want to run into a situation where we have 
$120,000 worth of computers that all come up in one year. Mm -hmm. And so, but at the same time, that cycle that I was working with CTS on would also push some of our laptops longer than what warranties or recommendations are. So basically, the idea was, well, let's buy a quarter of the laptops this year, desktops or whatever the employees need that makes sense because there's no point in buying laptops for people that don't need them. And then hold on to all the old ones because it's possible that four years from now when somebody's working with a seven-year-old machine that it, it dies, but now at least we have these replacements until... So, I mean, going through all of our equipment and trying to balance both um, spreading out the spending as well as extending the life of things is certainly something that we work on every mm. single year. Okay. Well, and I think a lot of that goes back to two city administrators go back when Dwayne was a no. council member. No. There was a lot of equipment that was you know, we just they they just didn't, didn't buy equipment yeah, we, you know I, so that's the perception in the heads of a lot of people that they remember those days where oh well, even when they ran things into the ground it, because that's the, what we were had to do right <laughs> so yeah i mean and some of that comes to maintenance cost too at some point it doesn't make sense to yep. keep putting no, I, I three thousand dollars a year into a truck so yeah th those are those are the kinds of um things that we weigh every single year when we recommend um, vehicles into a budget as to what what makes the most sense long term for this. So it, maybe maybe it, is, maybe it does make sense long term to get rid of a vehicle two years early because it's just costing too yep. much to keep, or maybe it's sense to yep. hold on to it for two more years. Mm -hmm. uh, the other uh, thing I comment on from the utility side, I, I see it more often the utility side because they have uh, their type of equipment, but there's certain advantages for the city to be able to purchase equipment, you know, sales tax and other fees and things and the resale is better knowing that it's been maintained so um, so the, financially there's a better uh, opportunities to purchase better than you or I can have mm -hmm. the city does uh, and then secondly from you see it in the utilities there's a cost of downtime that's more drastic mm -hmm. more more costly not so much with the pickup trucks, but certainly other equipment. It's, if something's not working, you've got a pretty high-paid salary professional that's not not able to work. So there's another cost to the equipment that we have to keep mindful of is that we can run it till it dies, but then if you've got people sitting in their hands, there's an opportunity, a, a big cost to that. Well, I even think of like the plow trucks, too. I mean, if we're down a plow truck or two yeah. and yeah. we've got a 12-inch snow, that suddenly... Now maybe well, we're running four plows instead of six, and residents don't like if you don't get down their street um, at the expected hour. You call another city, don't you, Matt? I'll tell you the joke behind that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, is there anything else? Otherwise, I'd take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you.